Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. They hail from the void, written by Rugi 2001. When the Council first found out about the humans, nobody could believe it. A sapient species hailing from a void zone. Hex boson counts are too low in these void zones for the particle to have any sizable effect on matter, hence the region's designation. Before humanity, the very same idea that sentient life could even develop under such conditions was thought impossible. The human sector, in particular, has the hex density of one particle per cubic light year, effectively creating the worst void zone known thus far. And, technically, it was the humans that found us, but because, yes, we never thought of scanning void zones. Our technology is not capable of such a feat, nor we had any interest in doing such a thing. So, when the first human craft came out of the void zone, hailing on a rather crude FTL engine, the Council, not without a lot of shock, finally registered the existence of this new, weird species, and naturally, we made first contact. The video of the meeting can be found at the link I'm sending you all, and I highly recommend watching it before our next class. Anyways, as I was saying, humans had their first contact with the Council's Trixillian Ambassador. It is recorded that the first thing the Ambassadors noticed was the spaceship's technological level. They noted an incredibly void dynamic design, a visibly superior craftsmanship and technological level than those of the very intergalactic Union. They called the head engineer of their own ship to even ask her what she thought about such a spacecraft, only to receive further confirmation that the human's incredible science. Then began the long act of first contact. The ambassadors contacted the human craft, named Ad Astra, and started exchanging first basic scientific principles and simple extralingual information in order to establish a common ground between two species. At first, there was something in the humans' responses and messages that didn't sound right, but nobody on the Trixillian spacecraft, the Space Queen, could exactly point out what, nor could they see it as more than a confused hunch. While the scientists of the two species talked and elaborated on their knowledge exchanging various information, in slightly less than a standard hour, 40 minutes by human criteria, the human software succeeded in coding the first crude translator. When they sent their first message coded in Alfurian, the Trixillian language spoken on the Space Queen, the crew was shocked. Who were these humans that could decipher an alien language, the first alien language so fast? The Trixillians began asking questions upon questions about the humans' home planet, their biological species, their culture, and so on and so forth, while also asking a plethora of different questions on every little thing that they could think of. Again, the Trixillians found it odd, but couldn't properly see the reason. After giving the humans a whole biology guide to their, well, biology, the humans asked for a formal meeting, face to face, they said. They promised that they wouldn't present any threat whatsoever to the crew, and offered to let only three humans on board of the Space Queen. It was weird and possibly a trap, but the ambassadors thought that only three specimens wouldn't be able to pose a real danger anyway and accepted, at this condition that the humans would undergo a series of medical and security tests to ascertain the safety of the Trixillian crew. The humans accepted and immediately started closing in with their spaceship. There is no video recording of the event, but I think it is important to know that the Ad Astra slid to the side of the Space Queen and then morphed, creating a docking port that, according to the Trixillian's testimony, never existed until moments before. Yes, class, the Trixillian crew that witnessed it all said that the human ship morphed as if alive and grew a docking port that wasn't there until a moment before. How it happened is a mystery and a clear sign of an unknown advanced technology. Quoting the words of Ambassador Ilya, Here are the photos of the three humans that boarded the Space Queen. From left to right, you can see their captain, the head scientist, and the head engineer. What they are wearing is a spacesuit to ensure no bacterial or viral exchange between two species. In the photo, three bipedal creatures, four limbs in total, stand in a decontamination chamber. They wear grey-black spacesuits that seem to adhere to their body like a second skin. 
highlighting and emphasizing their body's form, and that show no apparent signs of seams or joints. All three of them seem excited. The one on the left bent over a small window to look inside the Space Queen's interior. They happily complied to every test the Tractalians did, confirming the medical information previously shared. Then they finally sat down at a meeting table in front of the Space Queen's captain, the Trixilian ambassador, and a team of scientists of various fields. Then they began talking. They started from the biology field and branched out. It was clear to everybody on board that they were extremely happy, for whatever reason, and the meeting went off without a hitch. They talked about their home planet Earth, a median-sized globe with an axis inclination of 23.5 degrees, different biomes, and an elliptical orbit. Until the Trixillian scientists asked about their physics, and if they had found all 15 fundamental particles, to which the human scientists answered that there were actually 17, and started listing them. And so, the Trixillians discovered that there were actually 18 fundamental particles, because the humans didn't know about the Hex boson. How could that be possible? How could a space faring nay? A sapient species not know about the Hex boson. How did their technology even work then? Where exactly were these humans coming from? The Trixillians asked, shocked. And the answer left everyone speechless. These humans hailed from the very center of the Void Zone. They were a void-dwelling species. No wonder their technology had seemed so different, so alien. It worked with different physical laws. No wonder they hadn't shown the slightest speck of psychic ability on their medical reports. No wonder they didn't know what the Hex boson was. They couldn't observe it on their home planet. Nor on any of the colonized ones. Because yes, there had been a space-faring species for centuries already, but they had never ventured outside the void. They had terraformed more than a hundred planets and colonized another ten already favorable to life. No wonder their FDL engine was so crude and yet so advanced. It worked without the Hex reaction, and on a technology far more advanced than ours at the same time. When we tried explaining these things to the humans and showed them the Hex person, their scientists were utterly shocked. What we knew was the natural effects of the Hex person, they called it magic. Ghosts, transmutations, telekinetic alien species, psychic abilities, everything that was the norm for all the galaxy, was unknown and a mystery to these humans. Then they explained the fundamentals of their technology. Nanites, controlled nuclear fusion, gluonic engines, pseudo-gravity wells, quantum entangled communication to us. Whatever they mentioned was far more magic to us than we showed them. Spaceships, able to change their form in the deep void of space, as if made of sentient metal. Spacesuits that merged with the skin like if they were alive. Engines that used energy so powerful that they could easily destroy half a country if detonated. When we measured Earth's magical ability, as the humans had named it, i.e. the concentration of Hexperson, their planet results in being a class 10 anti-magic world in their own categorization, an A++ death world in the Galactic Union's tiered scale. Because, as you all know, the laws of physics change inside the Void Zone, and many species can't even survive in such a harsh environment, depending on the Hex boson's presence, hence the death of Death World. Apart from the initial shock and the awe at each other, the humans and Trixillians both found the other quite pleasant, and soon signed an agreement with each other, thus starting a long interspecies relationship that, to this very day, still stands strong. The humans then spent the next century studying the Hex boson, rapidly becoming the leading scientific species of the entire Union, and divulging their own technology to the entire space community, de facto throwing all of us in the future by many centuries. The year this fateful encounter took place was 6667 by I, or 2143 AD in human terms, and to this day, in my opinion, we still haven't witnessed the full potential of this new, incredible species that is humankind. That is all for today, class. For next time, watch the video I'll send you, and read the chapter about the human brain, as we'll speak about their psychic abilities. Have a nice day. Professor Ulrich Senner, Introduction to Lessons About Human Magic, Intergalactic Academy of Philosophy and Knowledge of Gal'ara, 
7730iy. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, Mids Difficult to Pronounce, Lord Azrakal, and Arcadian. 